if your desire is to win the next fully funded masters or phd in the us as a bsc graduate you should pay attention to what i'll be sharing on this video in this video i'll be teaching you the basic part of a strong academic cv understand that an academic cv is the pivotal and most important document in any graduate school application the academic cv has basic parts in fact there are these are compulsory parts that makes your academic cv a strong one i would give you the general overview of the cv and i would pay attention to these six parts that constitute um, a very strong and competitive outlook of your cv now an academic cv has one um, your personal information where you have your name very important now, the second part of that CV, most people don't put it, but for me, I think it is the announcement part of your CV is your uh, a summary of you beginning from your most congent um, research interests or whatever interest or, or, or bias of learning you are interested in, and it is followed with a sub-discipline, um, another bias of learning you are interested in, now it's followed with what you desire and is concluded with your skill. Now for this person, this Chuku Masiroma Dekunle, he is a, a graduate of biology. He is interested in computational microbiology. And so he has already told um, the, anybody look at this CV that he is a graduate interested in computational microbiology. Furthermore, he is also interested in bioinformatics beyond that he is looking out for a graduate research assistant position and he is a science data analyst anybody looking at this cv at one glance can tell uh, 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 can have a summary of who chukuma siroma dekule is he could tell that oh this guy is interested in uh, becoming a computational biology he also has um, a flair and interest in bioinformatics he is looking out for to become a graduate research assistant in in his in his um, ms or uh, phd uh, uh, academics he is he, also, he has also gathered ability in science data analytics now beyond that your personal information must have your email an official email, not uh, kiss me quick uh, at yahoo.com. It must be a um, very beautiful and official email that has your name. An official email has your name. Of course, you should have your mobile and it should have your LinkedIn uh, um, extension. Your LinkedIn extension is important. It shows that you have um, uh, the, 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 you have the outlook of a researcher. Now, these are the important parts of your personal information. Now, following your personal information immediately should be your educational information, and you just title it education. Now, the rule here is your education should open with your highest degree. For this particular CV, this person's highest degree is the Bachelor of Sciences. And you need to mention Bachelor of Science in what? Not just Bachelor of Sciences or not BSc. You must tell, you must be able to interpret um, the meaning of whatever short form or abbreviation you're using. So he has Bachelor of Sciences in Biology. It was awarded in this month and year, very compulsory too. The month and year of award should be stated. The university that awarded it where it is located, your CGPA, and the scale of um, the, 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 the markings of the CGPA. You must also have your terminal thesis. I believe that in Africa, 
and in most part of the third world nations, the, the, uh, uh, our BSc work, our uh, undergraduate studies concludes with a project. The title of that project should be stated in your education. Now, for some cases, you may also list some of the um, courses you took in your BSc. For example, this person can list that he took a course in biostatistics. He can list that he took a course in zoology. He could list that he took a course in environmental toxicology. You could list three or four of some of the courses you took. Don't forget that your education part must have your undergraduate supervisor. Now, even if the person is late, put the name down there. There's a reason for it. Now, following the education, the next part should be your research interest. Now, we've um, talked about research interest over and over again. Such interests are the uh, uh, the, the sub-disciplines of whatever you studied that you want to major at. It could be um, your, uh, it could be drawn from your, your BSc project work, or it could be drawn from a course you took in your year one, year two, or year three, that you feel that particular part could address the problems of society. For this particular CV, this person studied biology, but is interested in computational biology, is interested in virology and bacteria studies, interested in drug delivery system, is interested in biochemical analysis. These are sub branches, sub disciplines of biology, and therefore it, it falls under its research interest. Of course, in a CV, you should have four or five of this interest. Following that immediately should be your research experience. Now, uh, it, there is um, a, a confusion out there that says that an undergraduate or a fresh graduate cannot have um, a research experience. That is false. A fresh undergraduate, somebody who just graduated last year, has a research experience. Now, that research experience is drawn from his BSc project work. I believe that in Africa and in most parts of the third world nations, our BSc work concludes with a project. And that project is usually assigned about um, a year span. You're given a project at um, your 300 or 400, depending on of, um, the number of years your courses are. And you have one long year to search through the internet, review several literatures, carry out experiments, collect data, and summarize the data, and analyze them and make conclusions. That span of time, those pieces of work you do constitute a research experience. And so if you're a BSc graduate out there, you have a research experience. Put that span of time you use in writing your CV as your research experience. It should be listed as undergraduate research assistant. Um, in whose lab did you do it? Of course, from the, the bias of your project work, it's not all the labs in your department you are using. It's a particular lab you were assigned to, to um, work with, with your supervisor. That lab is what you would mention. You would tell us the name of the university that you carry out that research. Of course, you need to write the span of the time of that research. And of course, the need for your project supervisor's um, uh, app appendage. Now also, you need to tell us some of the things you achieve on that time or during that time of your CV. What are the things you were able to do? Write them in past action verb. That is, if you look at this carefully, you see such words like I extract, uh, extracted, performed, executed, gained, accomplished. That these are action verbs that are what you use in narrating your achievements in your research experience. Now, if you're looking out to get a graduate research assistant position or a graduate teaching assistant position, you must have this part and it should be followed with your teaching experience. In Nigeria, almost all um, youth core members are required to teach. And so that's time, that's your NYC work that you taught, put it down here. 
Now, also, if you have not thought, please note that in graduate school, one way you could easily get funding is by winning a GTA position, and it can only be awarded if you have a past teaching experience. Putting your past teaching experience automatically um, makes uh, the, the faculty sees you as an asset they can deploy for teaching on that graduate courses or grading such. And so the teaching experience is very, very important, always listed. Now followed, following that, you should have your professional experience. Please note that in the professional experience, you only list the professional experience that relates to what you are applying for. You don't go and tell them a list that uh, you were a salesperson at shop right. It doesn't show biology. You were not a salesperson in a, biologic, a bi biological lab or a pharmacy. You were selling uh, magi and pepper and all of that. It's, it's not part of your professional experience. The professional experience must be applicable professional experiences. Now, following that, immediately should be your publication and scholarship. Now, as part of the publication, you could begin from your BSc work. For this person, his BSc undergraduate work is listed as his research work. And it is stated that it is a BSc project work submitted to the Department of this and is unpublished. Now, if you also have published academic articles in um, peer review papers, and um, you could now list them down here. Also, following that would be the conferences, the webinars you've attended, please also list here these conferences and webinars that relate, that is uh, related to what you are applying for. Please note that your CV would vary with whatever position you are applying for. You don't use one CV for all um, different applications. You need to look through what are these people looking for and you tailor your CV towards what you are applying for. And so here you have to list two or three of your um, publications, if you have any, and you continue. The next part of the CV would be award and professional affiliations. Where you don't have awards, just list your professional affiliation. It's always important. Your departmental situation, please list them down here. And following that would be your applicable skills. The applicable skills is divided into four. It's important you divide it that way. That would announce your skill properly. One, you should list your laboratory analysis skill. The, the special tools in your, in your bias of learning you could use is very important. Yes, there are several... Um, uh, techniques and tools and laboratory appliances that um, is special to your field. For example, if you're a graduate of physics and you can use the X-ray diffraction machine, it's a very important tool. List it down here. So your the, the applicable tools you could use that concerns are relate to whatever you had your BSc on is what you list down here. Your ability in these tools are important. They make your CV competitive. Following that should be your computational and statistical skills. You're applying for a PhD or a master's. These are research-based degrees. And so you, 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 you show yourself competitive if you show them that you could use such things like Excel, like Python, like um, R, like Matplot and uh, Matlab and all of that. That should make the basis of your school skills. Following that would be um, your ability to make research and other skills. Of course, in a, in a uh, academic CV, you must have volunteering experiences and community service. That too is also a very important part. Now, I see that in most of your CVs, you put the referees as available on request. That is um, not a very good way of showing your referees. Your referees must be stated. It must be stated just the way I have it here. Very importantly is I must state their official email and what server relationship you have with them. If you're able to put up your CV in these 10 parts, I tell you, you'd have a very strong CV that is competitive and irresistible for any graduate school application. Go there now and start using 
this format for your strong CV.